Whoa! A wall of fire spreads around the epicenter of the impact. It burns everything in its path. The waves raised by the explosion cover large cities. And earthquakes are so strong that giant skyscrapers fall like a house of cards. So, these are the possible consequences of the collision with the first interstellar object in history to visit our solar system. We discovered it in 2017, but we're still not sure what it is. An asteroid, a comet, or a spaceship of some outer space civilization. So far, scientists have named it Oumuamua. Sounds like a Hawaiian cow. Well, whatever it is, its speed is much faster than other asteroids, about 54 miles per second. At that speed, you could cross the U.S. from coast to coast in less than three minutes. So this asteroid could travel from Earth to the Sun in about two months. By comparison, our rockets can travel up to 17,000 miles per hour. The same trip across the United States would take them about nine minutes. So many scientists speculate that this is an artificial object created by a very advanced civilization. Okay. The shape of the object supports this theory. It's long and narrow and resembles a spaceship. It's about half a mile long, way bigger than the Eiffel Tower. Scientists decided to see if Oumuamua was really someone's spaceship and pointed some radio telescopes at it. If the civilization on that ship had used communication or scanned us with their tech, we would have known about it. But there was complete silence. Kind of like that. Not a single radio wave. But that doesn't disprove the theory of outer space civilization. To find out for sure, we decided to determine the weight of the object. To do that, we use light. More precisely, it's reflection. You see, different materials reflect light differently. We take an unknown black stone, for example. It absorbs almost all the light, reflecting almost nothing. Check out the catalog. It's charcoal. Knowing the size and material of the object, we can determine its weight. So we need to see how much light this object reflects. And when scientists pointed their telescopes at Oumuamua, they learned that it reflects colors that match with iron and also with some solid rocks. And Oumuamua was flashing all the time. A bright flash. Then it would slowly fade. And then it would start to shine again. This means it was spinning. And it wasn't going around its axis like an arrow. It rotated chaotically, moving its edges up and down. Any artificial object or spacecraft would have been torn apart by such overloads. But Oumuamua is still intact. That means it's made of super hard materials that keep it from falling apart. And it's not hollow like a spaceship. It's one solid body. Hey, like me. The astounding speed of this object makes it pretty mysterious. Some comets can have the same or even higher speed, but they also have a kind of rocket effect. So when a spaceship starts from the launch pad, you see fire bursting out of its engines. Every second, the rocket mixes fuel with oxygen, ignites them, and ejects them at a tremendous speed. According to the laws of physics, this is like pushing off a wall. The rocket sort of jumps up from the combustion gas as it throws down. That's how the rocket creates thrust and accelerates. Comets work on a similar principle. The sun's rays hit the surface of the comet. Light elements like ice start to evaporate. That gas goes one way, the comet goes the other. Just like a rocket, the comet is pushing off the evaporating gas and accelerates. This gas also forms the comet's long tail. It's as if the massive rock is dragging all this gas behind it. I can relate. Or it's like a car pulls air with it when it goes at high speed. But Oumuamua is not a comet, and it doesn't have that tail, and it doesn't have the same rocket effect as a comet. So it couldn't have accelerated to that speed. But some scientists believe that Oumuamua used to have a tail. Although we discovered it in 2017, it entered our solar system in 1995, and it was hit by the sun's rays even back then. When we discovered this asteroid, it had already lost about 95% of its mass. It simply evaporated. Other scientists believe that Oumuamua got this velocity during its birth, somewhere far away in another star system or nebula. Perhaps it was a dramatic collision of some exoplanet with another cosmic object. The colossal explosive energy of the collision threw the elongated shard into outer space. Or it could have been a supernova explosion. 
When a star reaches the end of its lifespan, it becomes a red giant. It's an inflated version of the star, hundreds of times bigger. Then it shrinks and explodes with tremendous force. The blast waves can travel many light years away from the epicenter. And it's one of the brightest events in the universe. So the supernova might have torn some exoplanet to pieces. One of them, Oumuamua, gained a lot of energy and speed and began its long journey toward Earth. This might explain why Oumuamua keeps spinning so wildly. But recently, scientists published a theory that Oumuamua may be a giant block of ice. The kind of ice we're used to is water, H2O. But Oumuamua could be nitrogen ice, N2. It may have remained intact in interstellar space for 500 million years. And when it arrived in our solar system, nitrogen ice could have reflected two-thirds of the sun's rays, so it didn't heat up as much. That explains why Oumuamua doesn't have a tail. You can find the same nitrogen ice on Pluto, as well as on Triton, one of Neptune's moons. So Oumuamua comes from a similar icy exoplanet. But we can find out for sure only by sending a space probe to it. Scientists came up with a plan for that called Project Lyra. The problem is that Oumuamua is leaving our solar system at tremendous speeds, much faster than our rockets can fly. And we need to catch up with this space rock as quickly as possible before it gets too far away. To do this, we can use a gravity maneuver. First, the space probe makes a flyby of Jupiter. It passes close to it to take advantage of its gravity to accelerate. After that, the probe will head towards the Sun, and it'll fly around it as close as possible to fire like a catapult towards the space rock. The second option for reaching the asteroid is to use microprobes. We have to launch about a thousand of them into orbit. They should be no heavier than a match. Each of them will have a light sail the size of a boxing ring. Then we'll focus a powerful laser beam from the ground onto the sail. It will allow us to accelerate the probe to about 20% of the speed of light. It shouldn't go too fast not to fly past the asteroid. It should be able to enter its orbit or land on it. But if we're too slow, Oumuamua will leave our solar system before we can catch up with it. It'll be a great experience because in the future, we'll be able to use such asteroids as a space taxi. All we have to do is enter the orbit of such an interstellar asteroid or even land on it. Then we would keep moving through space at incredible speeds without using any fuel at all. This would be a great option for traveling long distances or to deliver supplies to other star systems. So why should we be afraid of such objects? Well, a collision with an asteroid the size of Oumuamua could wipe out an entire state. If it were to hit somewhere in the ocean, it could cause waves taller than our skyscrapers. Scientists are anxious to find ways to protect us against such objects. One of them is ramming. If we spot a potentially hazardous object, we could send a spaceship towards it, pedal to the metal. The spacecraft will have to ram the asteroid at an angle that will move its trajectory just a little bit. Moving it too much on a cosmic scale would only dramatically change the asteroid's final destination. And we only need to get the asteroid past our planet. We can also create a controlled explosion on the asteroid. It's based on the same principle. The force of the explosion would have to shift the trajectory of the asteroid slightly, or smash a giant rock into smaller pieces. Asteroids up to 80 feet wide would burn up completely in our atmosphere due to friction against the air. Rocks between 80 feet and half a mile in size may not burn up completely and cause local damage. Anything larger is considered very hazardous. You think? The traditional method of science fiction is to put rocket engines on the asteroid. Then we can not only change the trajectory of the space rock, but also control it. And we can use it against other asteroids. It would be something like space billions. <laughs>